I want to tell you guys a little bit about the Doppler shift. You might know a little bit about it, but I want to sort of mm. flesh it out some mm -hmm. more. Yeah, that'd be you've, good for me. You, you've surely heard of it. This is the mm. shift in the frequency of sound between when an object is approaching you versus when it's receding. We know it intuitively. That's the fun part about it. Yeah. Even if you didn't know there was a word for it, we know it. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you've if you're if you're on the side of a freeway or even at a racetrack, there's the sound of the car as it approaches you. And it goes And that's yeah. different from the sound it makes as it recedes from you. It goes mm -hmm. And you put them together, you got yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what well, happens. See, I I know it because there is a meme of you giving a talk and doing that, and as soon as you do it, they show a hurricane and a sign that knocks a woman. <laughs> Today and yesterday. What? Stop. Okay. Okay. I've, okay. I've seen I've seen one of those memes where somebody loads a fish into a cannon. Uh -huh. And then shoots <laughs> really? the fish, and then it goes, Meow, and then it lands in a fish shop somewhere. Like, yeah. So okay, I've only I didn't know that they. It, but the like, one with going. you is hilarious. Having never grown up near a NASCAR track or a, a race track of any kind, I would know that what you've just described from aircraft that would fly overhead. Yeah, it'd be easier at like at an airport. You'd get more of that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so the point is, if I s s recited that Doppler effect sound differently, you would say, "What's wrong with you?" Right? Mm -hmm. If I went, <laughs> no, you know intuitively that that's wrong. That's true. Or no, <laughs> no, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing at my Doppler shit. <laughs> it just sounds like a car going by with a cat hanging out the window. <laughs> it's having the time of its life. I think Chuck is jealous because he wishes he yeah. could do the Doppler shift. Uh, right. no. So, okay. So, Neil. Here's, so, here's my okay. point. Here's, here's, my, point. here's right. my point. So, it turns out that the frequency of sound mm -hmm. that is actually being made is accurate only when the car is directly in front of you passing Ooh. by okay so when it's coming towards you the sound waves are compressed which puts more crests and troughs by you per second more ah. wiggles and if there's more per second that's a higher frequency that's what frequency is how many crests mm -hmm. per second yeah. so higher frequency sound another word for that is a higher pitch okay as it's receding from you each next sound wave is now stretched from the previous one and so that's a lower pitch. But if it's right passing in front of you, it's neither coming towards you nor away. So the only truly accurate signal you can receive from the car is right when it passes in front of you. D wow. just, just a point of information there. So what do we do with electric cars? Okay, yeah. it turns out that not all of the sounds you hear is the engine. No. Right? Okay, and in fact, depending on how fast the car is going, some, and in some cases, most of the sound is the air passing over the car and the sound of the wheels turning on the, track, on, yeah. on, on, the, on the track. Those make sounds unto themselves. Now, uh, those who live in Los Angeles, okay? Mm -hmm. There's an in and out burger joint right beside LAX. There and is. And it is right there in the approach for planes landing. Mm -hmm. And you sit there, eat your burger, and you just watch it happen. The sounds you hear, the, 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 the plane does not need engines to come in for a landing. It's basically a glider at that point. Yeah. So if you want to know, yes, the engines, they're on, and so they're making some sound, but that's not the dominant sound. If you want to no. know what a pure airplane sounds like with air going over the, the, the airfoil, it's what the, the planes sound like as it's a very high pitched sound. It's like, it's like, uh, Chuck, I can't get it. It's like, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I, so <laughs> I used to work at that In-N-Out Burger. So, uh, <laughs> Can you imagine this burger joint, right, by LAX? <laughs> the, the, it's packed. 
to the rafters <laughs> with aviation nerds. Oh, <laughs> <that they went. laughs> well, they better come sponsor a show. Let me yeah. tell you that. Um, so, so the point is, we're talking about this because of NASCAR. All right. Mm, so now, yeah. I've been to a couple of NASCAR races in my life. Okay. okay. One of them was at Daytona. All okay. right. Okay. In Florida FLA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was so disappointed. You know why? Why? They have speakers all around the track. So you don't get the pure sound of the car moving from your left to your right. Oh. The speaker is giving you the sound of the cars as they are, not as they are Doppler shifted towards you and away from you. Wow. So you're actually missing the most beautiful Doppler shift you could possibly have, and that's a 200 mile an hour car coming towards you and going away from you. Screaming at you as it goes Screaming around. at you. Can you imagine how high that frequency would be? Yeah. At 200 miles an hour and how low it would be going out the other side. And they got some loud ass engines. On that. Wow. So you get the airfoil noise, the track noise, and the engine noise. But so if, that, if you're that, in the crowd, if you're in the crowd, Chuck, and you've got these PA speakers around the track, it is literally a constant wall of yes, sound. It's a yeah. it's constant. That's correct. So rather, but, and that, that for they don't lose out on this sound when the cars are on the far side of the track. So so I just, think that's just, that might be that, the motive. That's probably why they do it. And yeah. I've only been to those couple of tracks, so I can't speak for you know no, Talladega. I, I don't I right. don't know, but. So I was so ready to just feel the Doppler shift, and, and it wasn't there. So, so, so the so best way to do it is they do that on the on the televised broadcast. If you if you watch the televised broadcast of NASCAR, um, what you hear from the wide shot when you're looking at all the cars yeah. is, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's just a that's constant it. hum. It's a constant but the hum. The only time you see the hear the Doppler is. It's a single camera in the ground, and the car goes by you. Okay, okay, right, right. See, right. Chuck's Chuck Chuck is really into NASCAR, isn't he? Uh, right. you could tell this. <laughs> I got to tell you, as much as I make fun of it, sometimes I do like watching it, but not as much as Formula One. Nope. All right. All right. I'll, start I'll, that I'll fight put, here and now. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> get, get, get those racing overalls off. Here we go. <laughs> Put that jumpsuit on. Take those overalls off. Right. <laughs> so Doppler's traces back to a, a German physicist. He might have been a yes. chemist, actually. A German physicist, uh, Christian Doppler, and he oh. uh, he first measured this. And you do it Did he a have train. a twin? Did he have an identical twin? No, no, that was <laughs> Einstein with the twin paradox. So yeah. uh, no, I'm, I'm just thinking of doppelganger. Yeah, I was going to say he was yeah. Christian doppelganger. <laughs> oh, 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 doppel doppler ganger. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank Sorry. you. I Chuck saw, was there. I yeah, saw, leave I Chuck know, to tell the jokes on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you were not hired to tell jokes. Okay? <laughs> not Apparently good. not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he did it with a with a train, a railroad. That's a big thing. It's on a track. Mm -hmm. All right, you're doing this before you had automobiles. This was in the 1800s. Right. And so, what are you going to do? You're going to use a track. And <clears throat> it was some years later. Where I forgive me, I forgot the guy's name who decided to do this with two orchestras playing on flatbed rail cars. And each orchestra was told to play exactly the same note as, it's a subset of an orchestra, as the other orchestra. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay. so they each are playing the same note and they're coming towards you, okay? And so you hear, the, <laughs> so the, the, the funny part is they, as they pass in front of you, you hear the note, but all the notes were higher pitched as they came towards you and lower pitched as they went, yet you know they're playing the same note. That's what they were instructed to do. So so this was the people's fascination with this phenomenon. And I mean, it was quite the discovery. And by the way, we this extends into the universe. Um, we, we look at light shifting because objects moving towards us or away from us. And we can determine exactly, oh yeah, so I didn't make it clear. The, does it make sense to you that the amount that the wave shrinks or the amount that it expands should be related to the speed of the object? Would you oh. be together on that? Yes. Right. Right. So the faster it goes, the higher the pitch or, or the lower the pitch, but that each of those would be more with a higher speed. It turns out there's an exact relationship between the change in frequency and the speed. And it's, it's the Doppler formula. 
Okay, so what happens if I'm if I if I break the speed of sound? Oh, am ooh, I now ooh, ahead of? Ooh, 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 steady, ooh, steady. Ooh. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So well, uh, in that case, the note being played bursts your eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> you you dissolve into a pile of <laughs> a goo. Pile of goo. <laughs> All, All right. right. So here they are coming towards you, and you have this frequency that is broadcast, and the the moment you because the, the sound speed is sort of the same in air, except now you're moving through the air. So right. the next crest is compressed relative to the previous one. If you keep increasing your speed, the wavelength gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The frequency gets higher and higher and higher. The pitch gets higher and higher and higher. Right. There is a speed with which the next wave lands exactly on the wave you just emitted moments ago mm -hmm. when you are doing that you are traveling the speed of sound and every right. one of your waves is on exactly the same wavefront so there's a focusing of all of the sound that came in front of you into one place ah. and that place is a shock front moving at the speed of sound so that's and the sonic boom that's the sonic boom Wow. There you go. Mm. That's, there you go. That's so what if I cool. what if I floor it and I go faster than the speed of sound? Do I then dismantle the Doppler shift? Okay, so the Doppler formula yeah. works only up to the speed of sound. Right. Okay. After that, the free theory, it doesn't make sense to talk about a frequency because everything is Everything's jammed into there's no there is no mm. it's just yeah. a, a, a cacophony. Right. 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 So it's it's what we call and the linear regime of the phenomenon is where the Doppler formula applies. All right. Wow. Yeah, that so, is... so, so anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so I think because if you can't get it at NASCAR for the reasons I described, then walk up to the side of any freeway, any freeway and you will oh. hear, and of course you can, you can tell which are the electric cars and, and not because one will have an engine, but they'll all make sound. Every one oh. of them will make sound. That's good to know. Next time I'm selling oranges, I'm going to actually try this out. Oh, is that how you supplement your income from Star yeah, Talk? Yeah. Listen, okay. get out, I get out to the Major Deegan here in New York City. <laughs> okay. I, but, you know, here the is Major Deegan's uh, Interstate 85, 87. 87. In yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, for, uh, in, in New York, it's mangoes. Uh, in L.A., it's oranges. Okay. Yeah, right. people sell mangoes on the freeway here, which is so weird because it's a tropical fruit and we are nowhere near the tropics. Well, don't worry, we will be soon. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's another episode. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so all right, so I just want to throw some Doppler shift out there. All right, Maybe like you it. knew about it or you didn't, but that's those are the details. And it applies to trains and orchestras and... Uh, objects that move throughout. I, I want to know. I want to oh. know who it was. Put an orchestra on two flat big rail cars, right? Was it was it Count Count Von loaded? Okay. Count Von <laughs> way too much money. Wait, wait. Let me just, get. Let, well, I know. Oh. I know who it is. Hold on. I'll All right, please. I, I'm getting this from a book that is coming out this fall. It's Ooh. the third installment of a Star Talk book in oh. a collaboration with National Geographic. Very it's nice. A book, it's a book co-written. With one of our senior producers, Lindsay Walker. Uh, Fabulous. So, yeah. So, C H D Boys Ballot. Interesting name there. Wow. <laughs> Conducted a simple yet brilliant experiment to demonstrate the Doppler effect to anyone in doubt. By the way, the original Doppler effect was described just a couple of years earlier, 1842. So, he positioned one, oh, sorry, one band of trumpeters on a train platform and another band of trumpeters aboard a train to pass them by. And both were instructed to play the same note at the same time. And so then this whole thing was observed by all the curious onlookers. So yeah, it's it's a fun thing. But by the way, remember I told you the change in frequency is your speed in, in right. a formula? This is what radar guns do with the police. Right. They boop you with a radar gun and they're looking at the change in frequency of of microwaves yeah. that are reflected off your car. So if your car absorbs all microwaves, mm -hmm. the cop will have no signal back to them. And as far as they're concerned, your car isn't even What there. if I cover the whole car in an aluminum foil? 
Uh, well, the uh, aliens will not be able to read your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be safe. You'll be safe. <laughs> Yay. Who, want, who doesn't want to be safe? <laughs> so, but if what you put there reflects them back, then it works in the favor of the cops. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so the point is they can get their most accurate measure of your speed if they're standing exactly in the middle of the street as you drive towards them. They have to be directly in front of you. If they come on an angle, to, then it's but to, to get the correct speed, correct. Yes. But, so, but they're not in the middle of the street, they're on the side somewhere. Or if Ooh. they're clever, they're on a turn, and right before the turn, you are driving directly towards them. Yeah. But right. typically, you're on a straightaway, okay. Yeah. And so, if they clock you speeding, mm -hmm. and they were not standing right in front of you, you were speeding. Because at any angle from being directly in front of the car, there's a cosine uh, diluting of the speed that they measure. So if, if they're at an angle to you and they clock you going 100, 100 miles an hour, you're probably going 115 miles an hour, but you still get the ticket. Mm -hmm. get, but they can't ticket get you, you for anyway. 115 because they didn't measure that. That's the point. Right. See, and that, that's why I have a problem with... Uh, you know, them doing that to the black NASCAR drivers as they go around the track. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, I'm like, why Chuck. are you shooting him? Why are you shooting him with, a, get with, a, ticket with, a, with a radar gun? Now, that's only the only NASCAR driver to ever get a speeding light, ticket. Lights and sirens go over. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Chuck has an active imagination here. <laughs> so, so all I'm saying, so that's so. But by the way, there's a there's a whole other. Uh, in principle, there's a way to thwart that that <clears> invokes <throat> laws of physics that relate to your car, but that's that's for another day. Okay. And right. Plus, I don't think I should be giving uh, instructions on how to break the law. Okay. Why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think a lot of people, a lot of people listening right now, have Chuck's question on the tip of their tongue. Why? Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> like you probably so. listen. You probably be the only person I would take advice from on how to break the law, because everybody else I know is too damn stupid. What what it comes down to is, at any moment, no matter how fast you're going, there is a part of the car that's not going forward at all. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Maybe I should I, save that for another. You an, damn another sure should, because that is insane. Oh, oh okay, okay, that's okay. A teaser. All right, that's, all right, a teaser. Right, that's a teaser. I'm going to leave. I'm going to dangle that in front mm. of you. Okay. All right. And on and depending and for some trains, no matter their speed, there's a part of them that's moving backwards while they're going forwards. So are you just messing with us now? <laughs> no, okay, it's yeah. true. I'm it's just true. like, yeah. <laughs> and I believe for that car, you have to have a flux capacitor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, there you have it, guys. An explainer for Star Talk Sports Edition. Chuck, Gary, always good to have you there. Always a pleasure. Pleasure. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up. <laughs>